welcome back to another session on dentistry and more today we have anemia so we are focusing on classification and oral manifestations so we are not touching the treatment parts or the general symptoms but we are mainly focusing on the clinical variants of anemia and its oral manifestations so anemia is a condition where the rbc the number of rbc is less than normal okay so that is uh, known as anemic condition so we have classification based on its morphology and etiology and clinical variants the morphological classifications are the normocytic normochromic normocytic hypochromic normocytic uh, hypochromic and microcytic hypochromic it is based on the size of rbc and the color of rbc so the size is nothing but uh, the mcv that is mean corpuscular volume so mcv is mean corpuscular volume and the color is represented in mchc that is mean corpuscular uh, hemoglobin concentration mchc so in the first classification that is normocytic normochromic the size is normal and the color is normal whereas a normocytic hypochromic so here the hypochromic that is size is normal but the color is less or defective next one is a macrocytic hypochromic and macrocytic the size is large and the color is less microcytic hypochromic the size is small and the color is less so that is based on the morphology okay next we have etiological classification so it is based on the etiology or the based on the study of cause or origin so we have hemorrhagic anemia that is uh, due to the loss of blood it could be acute uh, loss in accident or also could be due to a chronic loss and hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia there can be extrinsic hemolytic anemia and intrinsic hemolytic anemia the intrinsic one are thalassemia and sickle cell anemia these two are intrinsic type whereas the extrinsic type we have many reasons like liver failure renal problems liver failure renal issues uh, then burns hypersplenism hepatitis malaria or penicillin uh, sulfur drugs problem poisoning by lead call presence of uh, rh factors or autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and ulcerative colitis in all these cases there are extrin extrinsic reasons of hemolytic anemia that will be hemolysis so the blood loss or the rbc will be less next is a nutritional deficiency anemia where the anemia is caused due to the nutrition problem so mostly it could be due to iron or protein or b12 or folic acid all these are required for normal production of hemoglobin so when this iron or protein or b12 or folic acid is not there the hemoglobin production will be impaired okay so that is nutritional deficiency anemia after that we have aplastic anemia aplastic anemia is bone marrow uh, disorder and uh, lastly we have anemia of chronic disease uh, the disease due to rheumatoid arthritis tuberculosis uh, chronic renal failure or hodgkin's disease so that is uh, etiological classification now we have the most important one that is a clinically significant variant so anyway it comes under the etiological classification but we are focusing mainly on the iron deficiency anemia it comes under nutritional deficiency Uh, and pernicious anemia or addison's not disease addison's anemia it is also a nutritional deficiency anemia megaloblastic also nutritional deficiency anemia sickle cell anemia is a hemolytic anemia thalassemia is also hemolytic anemia they are due to the intrinsic uh, factors and aplastic anemia is due to the uh, bone marrow disorder so the first one is iron deficiency anemia is the most common type of anemia so it develops due to inadequate availability of iron for the hemoglobin synthesis because for hemoglobin synthesis it requires iron 
so when iron is not there the hemoglobin synthesis will be impaired and it results in iron deficiency anemia and here the rbc will be microcytic size will be less and hypochromic the color will be impaired so it will be um, impaired or less mcv and less mchc so the causes of iron deficiency anemia uh, it is due to the loss of blood or the decreased intake of iron or the poor absorption of iron or over consumption or over requirement of iron the normal iron is present but body needs more iron for conditions like pregnancy and growth in these cases body needs more iron so in those case the hemoglobin synthesis will be impaired when there is poor absorption it will be impaired when there is less intake or loss of blood it will result in iron deficiency anemia so what are the features of iron deficiency anemia one is brittle nails and brittle hair then the spoon shaped nails which is known as coelonychias then there will be atrophy of papilla in the tongue sorry papilla in the tongue will be atrophied and there will be dysphagia that is difficulty in swallowing this is dysphagia next is a pernicious anemia or addison's anemia this is anemia due to deficiency of vitamin b12 it is uh, due to the atrophy of the gastric mucosa because of autoimmune destruction of parietal cells okay parietal cells destruction is happening so the gastric atrophy so destruction of parietal cells results in decreased production of intrinsic factor okay so there will be decreased production of intrinsic factor intrinsic factor production will be decreased thereby there will be poor absorption of vitamin b12 will be poor absorption of vitamin b12 which is actually the maturation factor for rbc okay this b12 is a maturation factor for rbc so this is connected parietal cells are destroyed intrinsic factor is less produced so there will be poor absorption of b12 which is a maturation factor for rbc so there will be less rbc production so these rbcs are larger but immature it's almost normal or slightly low hemoglobin level okay so this uh, pernicious anemia is common in old age and it is more common in females okay female predilection is there and it is associated with other autoimmune diseases uh, like disorders of thyroid gland and addison's disease uh, characteristic feature of this type of anemia are lemon yellow skin okay there will be lemon yellow skin and red sore tongue and neurological disorders such as paresthesia uh, that is abnormal sensations like numbness tingling burning will be there and progressive weakness and ataxia ataxia is uh, nothing but uh, muscular incoordination so that was about pernicious anemia now let's move to the megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia uh, is due to the deficiency of another maturation factor known as folic acid here the rbcs are not matured okay so the dna synthesis is also defective so the nucleus remains immature the rbc will be megaloblastic and hypochromic so features of uh, pernicious anemia also appear in this case but uh, there will not be any uh, neurological symptoms because uh, neurological symptoms are present only with the pernicious anemia okay uh, that was about megaloblastic anemia now let's move to the sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is a uh, inherited blood disorder characterized by sickle shaped okay sickle shaped rbc so it is also called hemoglobin ss disease or sickle cell disease it is commonly seen in people in african region and it is uh, sickle cell anemia due to the abnormal hemoglobin called hemoglobin s so in this alpha chains are normal but the beta chains are abnormal okay so hemoglobin has alpha and beta chains where the beta chains are abnormal so rbc is uh, like more uh, fragile 
and uh, which leads to hemolysis uh, because it is uh, attaining a sickle or crescent shaped so in children this hemolyzed sickle cell aggregate and block the blood vessels leading to infarction that is a stoppage of blood supply and this is infarction is common in small bones okay so this infarcted small bones in hand and foot results in varying length in the digits this condition is known as hand and foot syndrome and jaundice is also common in these children because the infarction is seen in small bones mainly the hand and foot there is a digits mainly seen in the digits so it is known as hand and foot syndrome next we have thalassemia okay thalassemia is also known as uh, Coolidge anemia or mediterranean anemia it is an inherited disorder characterized by abnormal hemoglobin uh, it is more common in thailand and to some extent in mediterranean countries okay thailand and mediterranean countries so this thalassemia is of two types one is alpha thalassemia and next one is a beta thalassemia so in normal hemoglobin the number of alpha and beta chains are equal in thalassemia the production of these chains become imbalanced because of the defective synthesis of the globin genes okay so defective synthesis of globin genes okay globin genes So this causes the precipitation of these polypeptide drains in the immature arm disease leading to disturbance in the erythropoiesis. So uh, we have alpha thalassemia which is commonly seen in fetal life or infancy. In this alpha chains are less absent or abnormal or defective. This leads to defective erythropoiesis and hemolysis. The infants may be stillborn or may die immediately after birth. Whereas the beta thalassemia is more common type which is seen in the adult people where the beta chains are less defective or absent. That is also leads to uh, defective hemolysis and erythropoiesis. The next one is aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia is due to the disorder of bone marrow that is red bone marrow. This bone marrow, uh, red bone marrow is reduced and replaced by fatty tissue. This bone marrow disorder occurs due to the repeated exposure of X-ray, X-ray exposure or the toxins like benzene, radium or due to the tuberculosis or due to the viral infections such as uh, HIV infection or hepatitis. So that was uh, all about the classification of uh, anemia we have uh, the first classification was about our morphology then the etiological classification then we changed the etiological classification into clinical significant variant the iron deficiency pernicious anemia or reticence anemia third one is megaloblastic sickle cell anemia and thalassemia lastly the aplastic anemia now what are we going to study is about the oral manifestations in oral manifestations there are some common uh, symptoms okay it includes uh, pallor common oral symptoms okay it is common for most of the anemic condition that is pallor of oral mucosa then glossitis or glossodynia there will be taste disturbance these are common symptoms okay then regarding the aplastic anemia uh, it may increase the susceptibility to oral infections there will be oral infections uh, which may require antibiotic prophylaxis or mouthwash because there are chances of uh, spontaneous or uncontrolled uh, gingival bleeding gingival bleeding that also we have to deal 
with anti-fibrinolytic medications or avoidance of intramuscular injections and nerve block anesthesia. So we need to be very careful with uh, aplastic anemic patients because there are chances of infection and bleeding. Whereas a pernicious anemia patient, okay, pernicious anemia, uh, there will be ankylar chelitis. then uh, mucositis and thresh oral ulcer all these will be for pernicious anemia okay and glaculitis mucositis thresh and oral ulcer okay then regarding the sickle cell anemia the main contraindication for dental treatment with the sickle cell anemia patient is routine care during a crisis. Uh, we need to schedule dental appointments during the morning with minimum treatment for a patient uh, with a brief visit. We need to prescribe the brief visit in morning. Then we need to we need to prescribe CNS depressants very cautiously. Uh, use of acetaminophen for treatment of pain because salicylates may induce acidosis and uh, avoid elective surgery such as removal of asymptomatic impacted tooth and dentists should monitor preventive dental care at routine follow-up visit a three-month recall may be necessary in some cases so that was about various oral manifestations it was basically common oral symptoms then we have symptoms of uh, pernicious anemia and the precautions we should take while dealing with aplastic anemia and sickle cell anemia so that's all for today we covered uh, the classification and all the manifestations of anemia so it was a lengthy session but uh, the questions are mostly asked sometimes on the clinical variants that is iron deficiency anemia pernicious megaloblastic sickle cell thalassemia aplastic anemia along with the oral uh, manifestation sometimes this question will be asked in general medicine so anyway understanding anemia is very much essential not just for the that's all for today i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you